Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Matthew Mumbles, my own personal podcast series where we pretty much talk about all things, my interests, things happening right now in the world, my thoughts on things, etc. Today we're discussing Anatomy Insanity Season 2, Episode 16. Yes, this is like the, basically the biggest episode in Anatomy Insanity history. Well, as far as like, what it's leading up to because this is it this is the finale quite possibly of the whole show which i mean it's fitting because steve cobb's the main villain well not really more technically well, maybe okay you know what actually i should probably just clarify this i am not going to be light on spoilers i'm going to be revealing tons of things so if you've not seen the episode yet that's your own fault you clicked on this video you saw the title and you chose i didn't watch the episode but i'm still gonna watch a review of it anyway let's go ahead and talk about it uh season two episode 15 i should probably say i'm gonna get a little flack for this but i kind of walked away a little underwhelmed when i first saw it the reason why it was because I was probably just expecting something a bit bigger from a penultimate challenge or something, like maybe involving something with the Prime Shimmers or seeing the return of Marshmallow and Bo and Doe and all that. But none of that was really in the episode, and they did allude to it, but like, I kind of expected, I guess, something a little bit more than that. But alas, I rewatched the episode. It's actually pretty good. I liked everything about it. I guess I just had my expectations too high. Season 2, episode 16 is the start of the Anatomy Sanity 2, the movie, and this thing totally blew season 2, episode 15 out of the water. I'm sorry, but there is no contest, which is weird because this whole show is about contests. But, like, it is so thrilling to see this whole show, like, at this climax moment. Because now we have the final two, Knife and Suitcase. And we even see some of the season three characters and how it like leads into, well, not leads into the events of season three because season three already canonically happened. And season three here, uh, how do I say this? Season three, well, obviously happened and a lot of the contestants, well, some of them, Cabby, Candle, and Goo make an appearance here. And they even interact with some of the season two contestants, well, specifically Suitcase, and they have, like, this really fun moment where Nickel and Balloon are, like, you know, they're on good terms now. And it's honestly really bittersweet. And although I wasn't expecting this whole ordeal to actually, like, happen, like, they would actually see how they would re be reacting. It was honestly, again, really, it was really cool just seeing it. And then, obviously, you got Knife and, you know, him having to deal with um, being the person who he's not um, anymore. You know, he's changed. And unfortunately, Suitcase's trauma has not gone away. Not uh, not one bit. And uh, Steve Cobbs, of course, plays a pretty important role. We get some more screen time with Meat Phone uh, 3GS. And just seeing like the backstory. Like we saw from the um, Season 2 Episode 14 flashback with the Prime Shimmers. That, come on, he was obviously there. With, obviously with Meat Phone 1. Unfortunately, they get killed. Uh, Mii Phone 3GS barely makes it out alive, but it's basically just locked away in a room. And um, kind of just left there. So, as far as, like, I'm just going to say this. The ending was the best part about it, but let me talk about Mii Phone X. We don't get to see Toilet in this episode, but we do get to see his perpetrator, Mii Phone X. Which, um, essentially, kind of goes on a killing spree. First, he kills... Uh, pickle like basically just turning him back into a regular object and then we see that happen to oj and then we see that happen to nickel although we nickels we don't really see on screen but we know it happened to him because baseball walked away like completely just traumatized and um you know meet phone x it's very interesting how only the person who he's targeting can hear and see him that was really interesting, how no one saw what was coming. So I wonder what that looks like. Like, as far as, like, how they die. Like, do they just literally disappear? Or, like, maybe they just, um... Like, well, like, what I mean is, like, just the limbs just disappear like that, or... Because, obviously, they had to have seen something, but turns out they didn't. So, I'm guessing in Season 2, Episode 17, um... 
which I don't know when it would be coming out. Uh, I don't work for Ad, uh, Adamation Inc. Um, you know, it's it's so suspenseful. Like, I wasn't expecting him to even, like, show up the way he did. Of course he would be showing up. I thought he would just be raiding the hotel. Of course he raided the hotel. But, like, I mean, just went on a full-on rampage, killing everybody and anybody. Like, within, boom, you're dead. Boom, you're dead. But, no, he actually takes his time and is, like, a straight-up horror villain. Like, seriously, this dude deserves his own horror film. Mephone X, or something. Anatomy Sanity, The Rise of Mephone X. And, uh, let's talk about the ending. Because I know that's going to be, like, one of the biggest plot points, plot twists of all time. There's, like, this kind of, like, recurring theme in the episode where Knife and Suitcase show their original auditions, of course, and their original assets and such. But it turns out that Mephone, Mephone 4 was the one who created them. That's how. That that was such a big plot twist for me. Because, like, I had no idea. I've been watching this show for the last nine upcoming ten years. And not once has this ever crossed my mind. The idea that Meepone was the one who created the contestants. Like, that's seriously something I never even considered. That was honestly really cool to just get that immediate plot twist. Like, I kid you not. Um, also, let's talk about, like, the voice acting because I know, like, that we got some new additions here, specifically some for OJ, uh, some for Doe, Bo. Um, I think there's a new voice actor for S Steve Cobbs himself. I could be wrong. I think it's a new voice actor from the previous two. Or they just reuse the same one. I don't know. I'm going to have to look into that. But the new voices sound really good. And honestly, like, they're so full of personality. They match the old one. And, like, I'm even surprised that the uh, new voice for Bo did such an amazing job. Because Bo sounds like a pretty tough character to nail down. So, um, that I like. I also like seeing Purgatory Mansion again. Which was, again, really fun. To actually see these uh, characters, like uh, specifically Marshmallow, Bone Doe, like seeing them again was actually pretty uh, awesome after all these years. And especially, like, it kind of alludes to, like, rolling back to season three, kind of alludes to the fact that, like, wait, these guys have been, well, it's basically been a day since they, uh, the events of season two, episode 14, but Meepone was gone for a pretty long time, but. Not really. So how a whole season came and went. Like you just never know. And. There's just so much I love about this episode. So. I think I'm going to end this episode here. Um, Again very shorter episode. Of like of my Matthew Mumbles episode. Not the series episode. It's like half hour. So go watch the episode. Link in the description. I mean if you, why would I be saying that if you've already watched it. But yeah, link is in the description for the full episode. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you guys liked it, definitely subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace, everyone.